Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the relaxation phenomena and relaxation time constants that is T1 and T2. This relaxation phenomena is very important in NMR spectroscopy because this explains how we get the spectrum in the NMR spectroscopy. But before discuss about this relaxation phenomena, let us have a quick recap of our previous video in which we have discussed about the interaction of radio frequency pulse with the net magnetization vector. Here, we are just going to discuss this in the quantum mechanical picture. As we all know, for nuclear spin value 1 by 2, the nuclei will have two spin orientations in the low energy state and high energy state, which is represented by Mi plus half and minus half. According to the Boltzmann distribution law, more number of nuclei are present in the low energy state as compared to the high energy state. On absorption of energy of appropriate frequency, this is the radio frequency which is having appropriate frequency as that of the difference between these two energy states. Only then the nuclei which are present in the low energy state will absorb this energy and switches to the high energy state and flip their orientation. This is represented in this way. When we switch off this radio frequency pulse, at that moment, this nuclei will lose its excess of energy in a non-radiative manner in the NMR spectroscopy and go back to its original state, which is called a relaxation phenomena. This can be explained in two ways. One is spin lattice relaxation, two time constant terms, one is T1 and the other one is T2. Since this is a non-radiative emission or relaxation phenomena. So, in this way, this nuclei will release its energy and that energy is absorbed by the solvent molecules or the lattice molecules which are present nearby this sample. So, suppose these are the solvent molecules which are present in the surroundings of our nuclei of interest. So, these if these nuclei or these molecules are vibrating, in the solid state or we can say molecular tumbling in the gaseous as well as in the liquid phase. So, if these uh, molecules will vibrate in with the same frequency as that of this emitted radiation and that emitted radiation will be absorbed by these lattice molecules and this relaxation phenomena is termed as spin lattice relaxation and this is represented by T1. A trick because many of the students will forget which is T1 and which is T2. Here is a lattice and if we write this L letter in this way, so it relates with the T1. So, in this way one can remember this which is T1. So, T1 is spin lattice relaxation. Here is the spin and this is the lattice, spin lattice. And the second relaxation phenomena is that when this nuclei, will emit its excess of energy. This nuclei go back to its low energy state and that excess of energy is absorbed by the nuclei which is present in the low energy state and will switches to the high energy state and flip its orientation. So, no net change in the population difference occurs in the spin spin relaxation phenomena however they will restore their randomness which we are going to discuss in terms of classical manner in classical manner suppose this is the system which is having two energy state this is our high energy state and this is our low energy state and it has more number of nuclei in the low energy state according to the boltzmann distribution law and corresponding to those axes of nuclei, we are having a net magnetization vector over here. And when a radio frequency pulse is applied, two things going to be happen as we discussed in our previous video. So, these randomly oriented nuclear spins will start processing in a coherent manner or partial coherent manner and in this way, if we stop or we apply this radio frequency pulse for 90 degree, then this net magnetization vector will stop at this position and now start processing in the XY plane. These all things we have discussed in our previous video. This is our transverse magnetization vector and this transverse magnetization vector cannot be 
pressure in the xy plane for infinite time however it will start shrinking with the time as it is processing in this xy plane due to the dephasing of the nuclei and the longitudinal magnetization vector will starts increasing gradually so this can be represented here by this small animation Relaxation of transverse magnetization is represented by T2 or spin, spin relaxation and this longitudinal magnetization vector reestablishment is defined by T1 relaxation phenomena or spin lattice relaxation phenomena that are represented here. So the two relaxation phenomena spin lattice and spin spin relaxation in the classical terms can be defined as these nuclei will restore their randomness one secondly the nuclei which switches to high energy state they will come back to their low energy state or we can say redistribution of population will occur so two things going to be happen restoration of the randomness and second one is redistribution of population so redistribution of population occurs by t1 phenomena so nuclei which are present in the high energy state will loses their energy and that energy will be absorbed by the lattice molecules if they are processing or move, vibrating with the same frequency as that of this emitted radiation and that is why we call it non radiative transition and this is termed as t1 phenomena or spin lattice relaxation the redistribution of population is established by the t1 phenomena and randomness will be described by the t2 so that can be explained over here since as we know the number of nuclei which are present in the sample they process with the lamb, different lama frequency irrespective of their different lama frequency they experience the same tip angle on absorption of radio frequency radiation so but now when the radio frequency is switched off the nuclei which are processing with different lama frequency now start processing with their lama frequency suppose this is our rotating frame of reference and this rotating frame of reference is rotating with say methyl protons of the tetramethyl silane then that is seems to be static at this rotating frame of reference and the nuclei which are having different lama frequency they generally process at faster speed than the tms but sometimes suppose we are having organometallic compounds they process at lower frequency so the nuclei which are processing with slower speed they are lagging behind and those which are moving at faster rate so the this differential angular velocity is seems in this manner and these nuclei which are processing with the slow and the faster rate will have different chemical shift value and they resonate at different chemical shift values in the spectrum if we talking about the macroscopic scale this net magnetization vector is processing in this xy plane but at the same time the nuclei which have different lama frequency they will process at different lama frequency so in this way this net magnetization vector will start shrinking and here we are having the response like this when this net magnetization vector is it at this position just immediately after the b1 field is switched off we will have maximum response and as the nuclei start processing with their lama frequencies some are moving with slow speed some are moving at faster speed this net magnetization vector will start shrinking but still it is processing about this so as it is shrinking amplitude of the wave is continuously descending this response is known as free induction decay which is received by the receiver coil this can be understand if we relate the analogy suppose this is our observer and it works as a receiver over here now this is a car which is moving away to this observer so the sound of this horn is seems to be decreasing or damping so in this way the signal is damping 
over here and this is called tailing of this fid maximum information in this fid is in the in the first part of the fid tailing doesn't have much information this is a first order exponential decay and it is represented by the term e raised to the power minus t upon t2 here t2 is the time constant when all the nuclei which are processing at different rate they are now suppose restore their randomness so the transverse magnetization vector now becomes zero and if we see the situation from this g direction then we will have a picture like this this is the equilibrium position from where we started but this is not happening alone while this net magnetization vector is decreasing at the same time the longitudinal magnetization vector will starts building here we can say that t2 spin spin relaxation occurs by redistribution of energy among various spins of the system which results in recovery of net magnetization vector in g direction or the longitudinal magnetization vector 30% of the original value now if we discuss about the spin lattice or longitudinal relaxation phenomena so when this transverse magnetization vector is decreasing this longitudinal magnetization will starts building so this is not happening in this way this rebuilt itself in a spiral manner since the transverse magnetization vector is decreasing and at the same time it starts rebuilding with this spiral manner the t1 spin lattice relaxation occur by the transfer of energy to the surroundings by dipolar coupling to the lattice and this t1 relaxation results in the recovery of net magnetization vector to the 63 percent of original value which is represented by this equation here mz is the net magnetization vector in g direction and this m0 is the equilibrium magnetization vector and this this is the time and t1 is the spin lattice relaxation time constant and since this is an exponential phenomena so it is building so this is represented in the positive manner and since transverse magnetization vector is decreasing with the time so it is in this way and both are exponential phenomena and this t1 time constant here is the t2 time constant in most of the samples we are having t2 equal to t1 but in many cases we are having a t2 relaxation or spin spin relaxation phenomena is faster than the t1 relaxation and in many cases we are having t t1 relaxation time constant is higher than the t2 for example in solids and in fat molecules where the lattice molecules are bigger in that case t1 is big larger than the t2 and the time evolution of magnetization vector was explained by the Bloch equation which we are not going to discuss over here. Now we are going to discuss about the Fourier transformation. This is very important phenomena and this is very important question from the interviewer's point of view. Now the Fourier transformation is a convenient mathematical tool for simultaneous extraction of all frequency components. It allows transform data from time into the frequency domain. So the FID which is observed by the T2 time relaxation by spin-spin relaxation that is in the time domain and when it is subjected to the Fourier transformation, this Fourier transformation will convert this time domain data to frequency domain and the nuclei which resonate at different chemical shift values are shown in the spectrum now we are going to discuss about the width of the signal the width of the signal can be represented here here is the peak and the width of at half height is represented by the formula 1 upon pi t2 in most of the textbooks this t2 is represented as t2 star so t2 star is nothing but t2 which involves the magnetic inhomogeneity as well so here as the the relaxation time t2 constant is longer narrow is the peak and if relaxation time is less 
the peak will be broader relaxation time can also be affected by the presence of the paramagnetic nuclei like oxygen in that case the peak will be broader i hope you understand all these concepts which have been discussed in this video if you like this video please subscribe my channel thank you all